David Nealman is founder and CEO of JetBlue. Mr. Nealman, I know it's been a tough week, so I appreciate you being here this morning. Thanks for having me, Matt. You, everything I've read from your airline over the last 24 hours and from you has said basically this airline will be back on schedule, all flights in the air today. I ask and I start with this because you've been wrong before. On Friday, you said the airline would be mostly running back at full speed on Saturday. And we all know Saturday, Sunday, and then again Monday, you had to cancel nearly 25% of your flights. So why is it going to be different today? Well, we're flying. Uh, we're up and going. First flights have left. Um, and, you know, I think that on Friday night, uh, we made a decision to uh, put some, some flights on the ground, the 23% of the 190s, just to try and reset the airline. It was probably an overreaction. We probably, uh, in hindsight, we didn't need to go that far. But we had put our, our customers and our crew members through so much over the last three days, we needed to give time to kind of to get back to normal. The question I've been hearing over these last five, six days, and I know you've heard this too, is they sure. say, how can a snowstorm that hits on a Wednesday of one week force an airline to cancel 139 flights or 23% of flights on the Monday of the next week? And if all airlines face the same storm, why did this hit JetBlue so hard and not those other airlines? Well, I think we had a weakness in our system. Um, you know, we, we had built an airline that was operating 600 flights a day, and in our irregular, op in our um, crew services area, the people that were in charge of reassigning people to flights, uh, on Wednesday we canceled 279 flights, and that displaced over 1,000 people of our flight crew members. And as they started to put back, that back together again, um, they didn't get it done for the next day because, not because they weren't good and not because we didn't have the system, but we, was just, we were overwhelmed but by it. But when you talk about a weakness in the system, analysts of your industry have said this is an airline that grew too big too fast. And this is an infrastructure problem. You can't fix an infrastructure problem overnight. How long is it going to take? Uh, I'll tell you, if we had a storm tomorrow, we would be 100% better off because it's, we really had uh, maybe 10 or 15 people trying to allocate the resources for these 1,000 people. And um, we have now brought in new people. We've trained people. We have contingency plans. We have databases. We have people working around the clock to make sure. You know, I, and Matt, I, I think um, because we had this problem, we've discovered, um, and, and it's not just this particular problem that caused this cascading effect, but we're going to have contingency plans for airports to redeploy people to, to be able to beef up reservations. Uh, we're going to be a much better airline because of this. Let me ask you a simple question. Is someone gonna, in a high-level position going to lose their job over this? No. No firings because of this? No. How do you think that's going to sit with passengers who want to hear about accountability? Well, I think accountability, um, you know, rests with the CEO. And I think, you know, even though I wasn't responsible for that particular part of the operation, that's where I spent three days, sleepless nights. And I know exactly what, what failed, and I know what can be fixed, and, and, and it will be fixed, and it, and it is being fixed. And, you know, we, we will be better than any other airline. And that's why we came out with the Bill of Rights today, because we're going to be held accountable day in, day out for our actions. I'm going to get to the Bill of Rights in a second. You know, people in this country, by and large, work for two weeks' vacation a year. Okay, yes. so if they were booking one of their weeks of vacation on JetBlue last week, they're none too happy with Absolutely. this airline right now. How do you get that trust back? What do you say to those people and say, don't worry about booking your next vacation with us? Well, I think yeah, um, we, had a, we had a problem, and it, this is a defining moment in our company. This is something that we have learned a painful lesson. And because it has been so painful, and had the storm gone on for one or two days, I'm not sure, I know we wouldn't be the company that we're going to be in the future because it, ha it is, has really um, it affected us to our core, and we are determined uh, not only to become better in the future, but to put in, 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 in place different processes to make sure it never happens again. I I've flown your airline, I have to say. I've always had good experiences. I watched the guys in our crew coming up to you before the program this morning all saying they liked your airline. You've spent thousands of man hours and millions Millions of dollars creating an image for this airline that it is passenger friendly what was it like to sit in your office or wherever you were over these last five days and watch one snowstorm basically take that image and flush it down the drain it was horrifying I mean it was it was it was you know the worst possible thing imaginable and that's why um, you know we have this determination to be better than we've ever been before and to make this you know it's not really sometimes what happens to you it's how you react to it and our reaction is going to be unbelievable let's let's talk about the bill of rights that you're announcing right here on this program this morning and put some graphics up and and the headlines to me are when you look at departure delays and ground delays departure delays basically you're telling your passengers a sliding scale we keep you sitting in the airport waiting for something we can control we're going to pay you more money the longer you sit is that the way i should read it that's exactly right 
And ground delays are different than departure delays how? <clears throat> well, if you push back from a gate and you're going somewhere um, and, and you're delayed for, for whatever reason up to a certain period of time, then you're going to start getting credit back from your flight. And I'm looking at ground delays, the graphic right there. One to two hour or half hour to one hour, you get $25 voucher. One to two hours, $100 voucher. Two to three hour delay, one way ticket. Four plus hour delay, round trip ticket. It occurs to me if this Bill of Rights had been in effect last week, this would have cost you a fortune. Uh, we're, we're going back and retroacting all that. We're going to we're going to give that to all of our How customers. How much does this cost the airline financially? Uh, it, it's going to be very expensive, but you know, I, I think it's give a, me a number. I mean, you, I know you've run the numbers. <clears throat> but, you know, we, I don't have the final number, but it's going to be, uh, I would say, maybe twenty or thirty million dollars, and maybe a little bit higher. You know, we're going to get the final tally in. But I think what's important is that I, I don't run the airline for one quarter of results. Uh, we are going to go overboard to make sure that. Uh, we get the credit back to the customers, that we apologize, that we explain what happened. More importantly, that we explain why this will never happen again. And then when we do that, our quarters, uh, you know, th we're going to offer something that no other airline will offer customers. And we're going to be held accountable and a laser beam focus by this Bill of Rights that we're going to have with us every day. Is, is your Bill of Rights a preemptive strike so that Congress doesn't get involved and impose a Bill of Rights? It's being talked about even in that piece we just saw. Congress might say, wait, we'll pass a Bill of Rights for passengers. As a CEO of a major airline, how would you feel if Congress got involved? Well, I've been to Washington a lot, and I've, I've listened to, to a, a lot of people down there. And, and you know, basically, uh, I want to take care of our own customers. I, want, I know what's right for our customers. We don't set out to, to not take care of our customers. And um, I, I, you know, why should Congress tell us how to treat our people? We should be able to do that. And so um, you know, we, we want to do it because it's the right thing to do. And, and it keeps us focused on the future. That's the most important thing. Because you know, it, uh, our customers understand a one day event. OK, we had a snowstorm. We canceled our flight. You know, that's just a bad luck thing. But the next day and the day after, they don't understand. And that's why um, that, that type of situation, we will not tolerate in the future. And we have lots of contingency plans, and we're going to be communicating that with our customers as we go forward. And yet no one loses their job. No. David Nealman, founder and CEO of JetBlue. I know it's been a tough week. Thanks for being here this morning.